I came up with a crazy idea to create a watercolor advent calendar, which involved me creating 24 envelopes, organizing them in a calendar, and painting 24 watercolor postcards. You can watch a short video review of the whole process of my calendar creation. The idea is to offer people uh, one Christmas-inspired subject to paint per day, every day until Christmas, to boost their and mine <laughs> festive spirit. It is a new concept of an online watercolor course for Watercolor Painting Academy, where students unlock a surprise lesson every day. And today I wanted to share with you one of the lessons from this watercolor advent calendar, a cute snowman. Hope you will enjoy painting it with me. First I'll just mark where will be the head and the body of the snowman so I can visually understand uh, the location, <laughs> the composition of uh, my painting and even though it's just one little snowman here, I still want it to be central on the paper so it doesn't lean too much on the left, on the right, uh, to the bottom or uh, you know high up on the paper. So by outlining the main two circles um, it just makes it a bit easier to see if my snowman is in the center and I think it's fine. So now uh, I can add the details and some facial features <laughs> to the snowman. So here's the carrot nose, eyes, cute little cheeks, smile, chin, and the hat. Now there will be uh, hands. little buttons and the rest of the body. All right, I think uh, that turned out pretty well. I removed this couple of lines that um, I don't need. And also make sure that your sketch is very light because the snowman is mostly white, <laughs> so you don't want the pencil line to be visible through watercolor layers. The secret to achieving nice and smooth transitions in our little snowman would be to use wet on wet technique. And that's why I'll take my natural brush and first just apply clean water everywhere on the body of the snowman except the nose. <laughs> Even the nose you can actually cover it with water because we're not going to work on it right away. So it will eventually get dry and uh, we will paint it later. What's important is the whole body. Uh, you don't need to touch the head as well. This can be worked on separately. Now I'd like to take um, nice blue color, something warm. For example, ultramarine. Uh, ultramarine blue or um, Indian Trend blue. I'll go with Indian Trend because this color doesn't granulate and um, I would prefer to not have granulation effect on my snowman but if you would like it go ahead and use uh, ultramarine blue. So now I'm adding this blue color right where the shadows should be. So for example here there will be a shadow from the hat, which is very natural. Then on the cheeks to show that those cheeks are three-dimensional. <laughs> and 
I will wash my brush, rinse it with rinse it against the tissue and carefully smooth out some of the strokes if I feel like they're too sharp. Right away, while I'm still here, I'll get a little bit of orange. For example, cadmium orange is gonna be fine. And I'll add a tiny stroke into the cheeks and maybe into the chin. If it turned out to be too bright, you can also dilute it with a semi-wet brush and carefully um, pull the pigment into a different direction. I'll also add a little bit of orange here right into the shadow. Make it smooth so it doesn't stand out too much. And move on. The bottom of the snowman might be even already dry because I'm working on a, on a cellulose paper and this paper gets dry really fast. So I can reapply clean water once more and do the same. I'll add a little bit of blue right on the side of the hand and just let it soak. There will be some blue here on the bottom of the belly and on the back over here. And of course, I'll need a little bit on both feet. Right away, I'll add a tiny bit of orange into the same place where I had blue. The reason I added the orange color to the snowman, even though it's not very typical, is because I want to create this feeling of a warm light shining onto the snowman. Like for example, if there is a candle, <laughs> candle light uh, or a warm uh, lamp light. I think this is gonna add some um, cozy feeling to the painting. But now we need to wait for it to get completely dry and then we will be able to and new layers. While my layers are getting fully dry, I can use this moment to um, paint the hat. I'm using bright red, uh, but there's no preferences. You can use cadmium red as well if you want to. And carefully Create the hat and along the way I am marking the strokes that represent uh, the pattern on the hat. So I leave some of the strokes white or rather I create red strokes and leave white area in between that on, on its own <laughs> represent white stroke. So basically using negative space technique by outlining the area, I actually create the white line. Mm. 
and then with the thin brush I'll just uh, leave super tiny almost invisible uh, marks on the white uh, areas the white stripes of the hat to just give a feeling of um, uh, a pattern of course it is so small that it is virtually impossible for a human eye to see that's why I'm not bothered with showing anything in particular I'm just leaving literally dots but it looks like there is a pattern <laughs> As we're here, I'll take a darker tone of red, which we already know how to create by adding green into red or even a tiny touch of black. I am creating the darker tone on the hat. And at the same time, I want to show the texture on the hat, like it's knitted, um, by adding strokes, like so. And those strokes, those lines, they resemble a knitted material, <laughs> like a sweater. <laughs> So while I was busy with that, the rest of my painting got super dry so I can be confident that I can move on and work on the shadows. I will mix blue and orange because those two are complementary colors and I will achieve a gray color. With that gray color, I will be able to outline some of the shadows even more specifically. So for example here on the cheek I can make the shadow a bit more noticeable and at the same time show the part where you see the smile. The same here I will Make the shadow on the cheek a little bit more noticeable and also dilute the stroke with a semi wet brush so it doesn't stand out too much. If it's too sharp, I'm diluting it with the semi wet brush. And also use it as an opportunity to create a shadow under the nose because the long carrot nose definitely drops the shadow. I will intensify the shadow under the hat and then with the remaining color that I have left on my brush I'll just carefully outline the body of our snowman. So for example, the hands here, here as well. The belly in front. and the back of the body.
Here my, sh my line is pretty sharp, so I am diluting it with the semi wet brush. And I want to mark the buttons, but first I'll start with the orange color and then I'll add black because it's always better to go from lightest to darkest tone. And those will be my last steps. So while I'm waiting for the rest of the body to get dry, I can paint a carrot. somewhere in between orange and red. There will be a carrot nose. Here my layer is drying with a sharp edge, so I'm removing it with the semi wet brush carefully. And also while <laughs> my uh, main part of the painting is getting dry. I can create the shadow right under the snowman. I'm aware that it might leak into the feet of the snowman, but I don't think it's going to be uh, catastrophic. <laughs> uh, it's going to merge naturally. And I don't think it's such a bad idea. But here we need to have a very clear distinction between the tones. So here the tone should be definitely darker to show that as a shadow. And then if it's going up into your snowman, you can just move your paper like this and to let the pigment flow down instead. Also, you can correct the tone if you need to with the semi wet brush, removing the color. Just like so. I've got a little cauliflower happening in the belly, so I am trying to remove the edges of it with the semi wet brush. And it's working out pretty fine. So while uh, the bottom is getting dry, I need to make sure that the face is dry as well before I paint the eyes and the smile. So now when the painting is completely dry, with the darkest tone, I took black, I can create the eyes, some of the shadows, the smile, the buttons, all the details. So your stroke should be very thin and delicate. And here I'll add a little bit of a shadow on the inner side of the hat. If you enjoyed painting this little postcard, I'm sure you will love the other 23 watercolor projects from this advent calendar course. Join me on this creative journey and enjoy Christmas mood every day, all the way until Christmas. 
The link to join into this course is in the description to this video. Happy holidays!